Welcome to another virtual listening session held by the members of the Board of County Commissioners. I'm Dylan Blaylock with Clackamas County's Public and Government Affairs Department, and I'll be coordinating the public comments for today's meeting. Today's topic is internet access and connectivity. The listening session will go until about four o'clock or until we run out of comments and questions, uh, whichever comes first. The session will be archived to YouTube. This is an opportunity for commissioners and uh, eventually other county officials to hear from the public about your experiences and opinions, your questions and concerns, and I'll relay how to provide comment in just a little bit. Joining us today are Clackamas County Chair Jim Bernard and Commissioner Ken Humberston. And Chair Bernard, let's go ahead and start with you for any opening comments. Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, Ken, uh, it looks like he's in his office. Uh, at his home, I look like I'm in my office at work. I'm actually at home, but uh, thank you for joining us. During this ongoing pandemic, the Board of County Commissioners has prioritized staying directly connected with our residents and stakeholders. We've held many listening sessions and town halls during the past few weeks, and we continue to set a lot, uh, see a lot of public participation. Today's topic is the internet access and connectivity. Self-isolation practices during the pandemic has cast a national and local light on the digital divide. The gap between those who have already access to computers and internet and those who do not. This is particularly true for members of the public who primarily access the internet at their workplace their children from home school or from school and individuals in rural areas. The Board of County Commissioners needs to know about the public's issues around internet connectivity. What are the challenges and what uh, are some, have been some of the ramifications? We wanna hear your opinions, your personal experience and your suggestions. And with that, I'm gonna pass it on to the Distinguished County Commissioner Ken Humberston. Thank you, Chair Bernard. <laughs> and I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. We're going to take what we hear today back to the full Board of County Commissioners, and it will help us future in the future to guide us in our decision making. Both Chair Bernard and I have been looking at the issue of internet access and connectivity for our residents for years. This issue is important to us. I'd like to point out some recent news about free county Wi-Fi hotspots for anyone who isn't aware. This past weekend, the county built and activated its first Wi-Fi hotspot in order to ensure that residents in need of reliable internet access while self-isolating can connect to the internet. That hotspot is in government camp. Since that time, the county's built and activated additional hotspots in Sandy, Welches, and Boring. In just a couple of days, we expect to have two more in Canby and in Hubbard, and we have more on the way. You can find more information about the hotspots on the webpage of our Clackamas Broadband Exchange Program that's at our website, www.clackamas.us forward slash CBX. We look forward to your questions and comments today. Uh, I would like to, on a personal note, uh, say that this is uh, a major step forward, um, and I am looking forward to the next step going forward. Uh, as, as the county commission works on getting high-speed internet everywhere in our county, not just in our rural or in just in our uh, uh, urbanized areas. So Dylan, take it away. Great. Thank you very much, Commissioner Humberston, and thank you, uh, Chair Bernard, both for the opening comments and for joining us today. And with that, we will go to comments from our uh, residents and stakeholders. To give a comment, you can go ahead and select the raise hand button on the Zoom bar. That's gonna be at the top or bottom, depending on your device. Uh, if you're on the phone and you'd like to give a comment, you can go ahead and hit star nine, and that lets me know that you are interested in, in providing a comment. Or at any time, you can also email your comment in by emailing to clacconews at clackamas.us. That's clackco, C-L-A-C-K-C-O, news at clackamas.us. 
And we will start, we already got in several comments over email, so I will start with a couple of those commissioners. Uh, the first is from Mike in Clackamas. Uh, my question, can the Wi-Fi in the schools and libraries be enabled for the community, including for student access? Obviously, I'll preface that by saying the county does not have oversight over the schools, but of course we do uh, get involved with the libraries, but I will let either of you um, field that. Yeah. I don't know well, the answer. I, I, we would have to check. Yeah, we would have to check with tech services on that. So um, I'm writing that question down. Um, Wi-Fi for public in libraries. Um, with respect to schools, I would suggest contacting the school superintendents or uh, if you know any of your school board members, uh, contact them and ask them to check with their technology services people and see what can be done. That's not a bad idea. Very good. Uh, the next question uh, from email is from Shauna and Sandy, and I will relay that this is, she starts off with a simple question, but then adds kind of a, a lengthy comment. But again, I think that's good. That's what the, the point of these are. Shauna and Sandy. When will there be an option for broadband speed in, uh, in rural Clackamas County on East Marmot Road? We see fiber has been buried along the road, but the word thus far through informal channels is that service will not be offered to local residents. Is this correct and what is the alternative? But here's the longer, the longer um, narrative. To add a voice echoing the reality of the digital divide, we can attest that the lack of availability of broadband speed internet creates challenges for residents of rural Clackamas County. Pre-pandemic, it was inconvenient to not be able to stream television, shop online, or perform work functions during weekends and off hours. With the self-isolation practices during this pandemic, the ramifications are much more notable. In our household, we are unable to effectively work, attend school, access telehealth, connect with family and friends, or access online forms of entertainment from our residents. While we currently have HughesNet for internet connectivity and had the Verizon home service previously, neither option is sufficient for the demands of our jobs, let alone all of the other necessary uses. There are data caps, they are unreliable, and we cannot achieve speeds sufficient for reliably, reliably streaming or using video. Our household is currently paying for HughesNet so we can keep our home alarm connected and can do things that don't require high speed or low latency, such as checking email. We are in a cellular dead spot, so cannot reliably get a signal on a mobile phone. Due to the pandemic, we purchased and pay monthly service for Verizon hotspots, so we have a limited amount of data each month to use for work. But again, since we are in a location with a strong or reliable mobile signal combined with slower speeds imposed by the carrier, once we hit a monthly data limit, it is not possible to meet work commitments from home. And unfortunately, we are not able to join the virtual listening session today but we hope to be able to make the drive to the location with service so we can at least listen in. So again, that was from Shauna and Sandy. Again? Okay. So <laughs> Shauna, you just about rang every single bell you could possibly you could possibly ring as far as I'm personally concerned. You, you hit the nail on the head. It's precisely why for over two years I have been pursuing this aggressively and, and uh, why Commissioner Bernard has been on board with me on this also. Um, those are the needs that we want to fulfill. Um, I can tell you that two and a half years ago I sat with the local providers, uh, the commercial providers, and I said we would be happy to partner with them and basically none of them took us up on it. So we did recently do a partnership with SandyNet to what's known as the uh, Kiwanis properties. Uh, and and uh, the first few houses have been hooked up and they, they've got excellent service. And I will tell you this, that the offer is still on the table to companies to partner with the county to, to do this. Uh, and I am gonna keep pursuing trying to have the county actually do its own ISP um, and go further than just hotspots. But you definitely hit the nail on the head. I'd like to add, uh, you know, we hope you can join too soon. Uh, the challenge is it's very expensive. 
And we started this program with a grant from the federal government, a stimulus grant, number of years ago. And what we are doing now is we are uh, working on uh, applying for that grant. Uh, and we're also creating a business plan. Some counties have gone out and bonded this. Uh, we are trying to do this without debt. Uh, without debt, we can provide the service cheaper. Uh, we're trying to get a, under $100 for a gig. I think that's right, Ken. <laughs> yeah, six, Sandy does there, it $60 a for a gig. Yeah, so if we can do that and, you know, uh, we're more than willing to do that, but if we can get this grant from the federal government, that's more likely possible. Again, we don't want to create a debt and we don't want to put our, our other businesses out of business. Uh, so we are certainly willing to partner and make this happen. So I don't know that, so how do we respond to somebody who can't be live? Dylan, if she's not on this, how does she hear her answer? Right. Um, she, well, remember everything, everything is, well, she can't answer right now, of course, but everything we're doing is going to be archived. And so I can be sure to reach out to this person then with okay. a link in terms of the archive. Yeah, so we'll do that. Okay, great. And I will add commissioners for the first time. All I don't right. know, I don't, yep. I will, I will add there is a bit of a delay, it seems like, but I can hear um, both of you perfectly. And in talking with the producer online, we can hear there hasn't been a cutout on audio, but it just for whatever reason, the network seems to be a little slow right now, which may be indicative mm -hmm. of what we're talking about. <laughs> but rest assured, um, we're hearing everything. So that's good. There's just a bit of a lag in the video. Uh, I see we have had some uh, some hands go up. So I'm going to bring in uh, a, a, a Zoomer, as it were. Uh, we'll go with Stuart Long. So Stuart, if you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, great. And you're on with the commissioners to relay your your comment. If you could just state your name in your area and keep your comment under three minutes. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, thank you. My name is Stuart Long. I'm the Chief Information Officer at Clackamas Education Service District. I want us to first say, take a second to say thank you for your partnership in working together uh, to help uh, get the Wi-Fi hotspots out. We've been partnering that. We're really excited um, to be able to activate some of those and work with the schools to help activate those in areas where there are kids in need. Um, also want to say there are some school districts that do have uh, Wi-Fi activated, but it's not everyone. So I think your, your comment there to have them contact their local district is uh, a wise and one and uh, check with their superintendents to see if uh, that's getting turned on in the same way. Um, but I, have, I just want to further encourage um, you to consider uh, reaching back out to the ISPs, the local ISPs. Again, we are in a time of national crisis, obviously, we're all aware and the digital divide is so real. Um, we have, and I'm speaking for the districts, I've watched them patch together a patchwork of cellular connectivity and um, ISP where they can um, to help schools and students get connected, but that's a temporary stopgap. And so whatever we can do to help close that in a more permanent fashion, um, uh, especially in the near term, uh, working with local providers, um, even if it comes down to helping them subsidize some of these longer term, these long runs that are not cost productive. It helps both them keep jobs in the community, which is uh, something we're all interested in right now. But then also it helps get the students connected, which is the ultimate goal. Long term, I love the idea of having a public uh, ISP. I think that's a great goal. Um, and obviously that's a, that's a long term goal that will take some time, but we have a very short term need that uh, I would encourage us to fill as rapidly as possible. Um, and the ones who can do that right now are the, are the local community providers. And so we would love to sit down with you and them and have a conversation about how we all come to solve this problem that we all have. And it's a shared goal right now. So thank you for your time and for listening. Ken, did you wanna say something? I just want to say that I made I have made a commitment to a couple of our other board members that uh, once we have decided to do an ISP, 
start working on the business plan and make our application for grants, that I would invite them, the uh, ISP providers, back to the table to have exactly that conversation. Uh, my objective, and I believe Commissioner Bernard's objective, every step of the way has been get the service to the people. We're not interested in putting people out of business or people out of work. Just want to get this particular uh, utility into everybody's hands in Clackamas County. Thanks, Stuart. Great. Thank you very much, Stuart, for that comment. And as long as it's being referenced a couple times, I'm just going to share my screen for one second to let our audience and viewers know real quickly that we have this the hotspot page available that Commissioner Humberson referenced earlier at clackamas.us slash CBX hotspots. And if you go here, it actually lists where all of the county hotspots are right now for free Wi-Fi and when um, they are going to be up and running for the future ones. As he mentioned, there are two that should be up by the end of the day tomorrow. So just wanted to bring that in really quickly. And with that, we will go to our next uh, caller. Uh, and this is a, on the phone. I do not have a name. The handle only shows the last three digits and the last three digits here are 005. So if you are on the phone and your last three digits are 005, you are on with the commissioners. If you could identify yourself, your area, and keep your comments under three minutes. Yeah, definitely. Um, hi, my name is Alexander Wold. Um, I live in the Milwaukee area. Um, I'm an engineer by trade. I'm also trying to uh, create my own uh, local ISP. I'm trying to become a service provider for Milwaukee and expanding out to the rest of Clackamas County. Um, my question was, is um, for local small service providers or ones that are trying to become service providers, is, there, is the county willing to work with smaller companies to either lower CBX fees or even uh, you know, partner with us so that we can you know, target areas that are most affected, but mostly rural and um, underserved areas, especially like in Tualatin and out in like rural areas of Clackamas County. Um, yeah, and just, you know, like we're like, like my company, we're very small. It's just me and my partner. And we're basically trying to build this out and try to work with Clackamas County. And our biggest uh, hurdles right now are all the fees that are involved with that. Um, you know, there's a lot of capital involved with that, but we're willing to make that investment if it makes sense financially. Again. Yeah, I would say reach out to Dave Cummings at, te uh, at um, our uh, technical services department and uh, start there for, with a conversation. Uh, that would probably be the best place to start. And um, Dylan, can you give him uh, the, the way to make that contact? Yeah. Um, yes, I can, provided, um, oh, shoot, I can't show it on the screen because he's on the phone. But if you want to to email me, caller, then I can get you in, in contact with the right people. Um, yeah. There we and, go. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. My, 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 yeah, my information is all over the, the website. So so thanks very much. Appreciate that. Uh, Chair Bernard, did you have anything to add? Um, I, I would say yes. We're probably interested. But... Remember, I don't know what the fees are. Uh, yeah. I, my guess is they're fairly low compared to commercial folks. Uh, and we're doing this by surviving by the fees. Uh, that's what's uh, allowing us to grow. So I don't know what fees you're, uh, you're talking about, but I don't do the fees on this. So call Dave Cummings and uh, he can, or his department, and they'll figure out something that I'd love to see you successful. Oh, Very good, thank you. One other comment to Dylan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Dylan, would you uh, make sure that get, um, uh, Mr. Schmidt uh, and uh, Laura Zentner are informed of this, please? Yes, yeah, that's no problem. Thank and, you. The call, and, and for the caller, you can also email in Clacco News at clackamas.us, I manage that, um, that email as well. So if you can't find mine. So thank you very much. Uh, okay, and the next call or next Zoom will take from Charles Ormsby. So Charles, uh, if you can unmute yourself um, and then you are gonna be on, but I don't see you as being unmuted yet. Again, the person whose handle is Charles Ormsby. I have down still that you are muted and I cannot unmute you. There oh, you go. There you go. Hi, Charles. 
Uh, I'm, I'm becoming fast, becoming a technical. Uh, my name is Charles Ormsby. I live in uh, Birds Hill area, northeast quadrant, Lake Oswego, River Mile 20, the railroad bridge on the Willamette River as a landmark. Uh, a lot of things going on, uh, not just with the uh, infrastructure of internet and whatnot. We need a visual dictionary of the bloody term, so a somebody who was involved in a little uh, housing project 210 miles above the uh, UP, uh, the railroad bridge can understand it. I've dealt with the International Space Station, so I know what hyper complexity is. Uh, my concern is that the Clackamas County level is document prep preparation. Uh, people can, the limits on Gmail attachments and whatnot and uh, stuff that we can handle as neighborhood chairs and, and whatnot are 20 megabytes, period. That's all Gmail can handle. And when you get into a complex document with attachments, appendices and whatnot, it drives me nuts. I spent about 15 hours last week trying to parse a Lake Oswego document regarding a sewer plant for a hearing that's coming up on the uh, 16th of June. Uh, communication just doesn't exist with between people and government uh, substantially to address these issues. And especially handling documents is becoming really bad. Uh, again, the nomenclature isn't there, visual dictionaries as to what documents are, attachments, appendices, and all this other stuff drives you nuts after a while. And so uh, just in the local, and where, where is stuff posted in the Clackamas County, how they archive, how, you, how do you get to it, and, uh, not just two, two minutes from now, but two years from now, and God help you, 20 years from now. Uh, so those are, document control is a real problem with me. So uh, what, what can Clackamas County do to address this in conjunction with all the uh, local jurisdictions in the uh, Portland metro area? Well, are you, Charles, on uh, what, what's your service provider? Who's your service provider? I'm just, I, I, forget about service. I'm, I can get connected just barely, uh, but I'm doing it. Uh, my concern is document control within Clackamas County. Where do you put stuff? How do you, how do you relate that to somebody who's trying to find a particular document, such as an attachment to an email or an attachment to some packet or a report? that's buried deep in one of your meeting packets. You know, uh, one of your packets on the Oak Grove Bridge about a year ago was 500 pages. And I had to go through and parse that into its components. And that takes a lot of time. You need specialized software to do it. And so it's not just the infrastructure of getting people connected to the internet, but it's also the nomenclature of how documents are stored and handled within the government body. And I'm dealing with everybody between here and the white, uh, my house and the White House. I don't have an answer for you, Charles. This, uh, that's something you, <laughs> you'd have to talk to maybe uh, Dylan and his department about how we uh, manage our websites <laughs> and our packages. But right. I don't if know, you Dylan? Want well, if you, if you want, Charles, if you want to, again, send in a notice about this to... Um, to Clacko News at Clackamas, I can sort of rail it to uh, deliver it to the right person. It is, it's more than PGA, I think, Chair. I think maybe the question also goes to the board packets, for example. The board packets sometimes can be several hundred pages as necessary due to some of this, um, the state regulations, the regulations we have to put out. And so then those can be very large files. Yeah. So, but yeah, I have to, it's a good question. I have to think about that. Okay. okay, I can try that. I can try to route that the right way, Charles, for that. But thank you for that. Okay, and now we'll go to um, uh, another question that we got over email while this was going on. This is from Trisha from the North Clackamas School District. Uh, are you concerned about asking people to come out of their homes to be able to access the Wi-Fi antennas that have been installed in the Sandy area? <clears throat> so again, this is referencing the hot spots in regards to I think the stay home, stay healthy. Ken. Well, I would expect people to be responsible citizens and do the appropriate social distancing. There, it, unless you live in the same house, there should only be one person in the car, not your neighbor. Um, wear, wear masks if you get out of the car and you're going to be near anybody else. Um, just take the basic, simple precautions. 
uh, and, and then I would say I don't have any concerns. Obviously, unfortunately, we have some people who won't even take the basic precautions. So um, being there in your car with, with windows that can close will be to your benefit also. But, um, you know, people go to the grocery store and other places. So um, I don't want to see it so restricted that you can't breathe, so to speak. Um, but take the appropriate precautions. Uh, we can't solve every, uh, everything. We're just trying to provide access where possible and hopefully people follow the rules when they get there. All right, very good. Um, and thank you for that, uh, Tricia. Um, another comment uh, over email, uh, Mike in zigzag. And I think you'll hear a lot of the same um, themes in some of the comments, commissioners. There are a large number of residents who do not have access to high-speed internet to allow Zooming. I live in zigzag off of Lolo Pass Road and the residents here do not have broadband. During this time of the pandemic and all of the communications from various agencies, including Medicare, insurance companies, the Census Bureau, local schools, all seem to take for granted that everyone has the capability to use teledocs, Zoom conferencing, instructions from a teacher, et cetera. We don't even get cell phone service. Like FDR did with the New Deal, I would like to see a 2020 New Deal whereby a top priority as we come out of this crisis would be developing the infrastructure to have high-speed internet available to every American. Uh, let's start up here. Thank you, I appreciate all of your work. Yeah, we, we agree with you a thousand percent. Uh, <laughs> and we are trying to do that. Uh, and uh, should we achieve this uh, uh, grant, get this grant, it will help. But it does cost, uh, Ken, was it Hillsborough or somebody that put out a bond for? Yes, Hillsborough did a $24 million bond. But uh, yeah. we're not in a position to do that. Yeah. Um, so we, I, I, we, go ahead. I was going to say, in, in the last conversations that we had with, with our Senate delegation to the U.S. Senate, um, the last five words that I used with uh, Senator Merkley and Senator Wyden was infrastructure, 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 infrastructure. Um, and that, I mean, roads, bridges, schools, hospitals, um, uh, sewer treatment plants, water treatment plants, uh, high-speed internet, all of it. We need to be rebuilding this country if we want to get out of the economic problems that we're going to be facing. And this is one major component of it, in my opinion. So I think you're right on. Yep. Okay, very good. I want to remind the attendees that we have, um, if you want to go ahead and pose a question, um, please hit the raise <clears throat> hand button on Zoom. Only one question or comment per, um, per attendee, please, however. Um, or if you're on the phone, you can go ahead and hit star nine. So thank you again. Uh, another offline question from, and I think you referenced this earlier, Chair Bernard, uh, maybe near the beginning, uh, from Dean and Damascus. <laughs> Nine, nine years after the Obama administration gave Clackamas County $9 million to bring high-speed internet to those rural residents who were not served, we still do not have high-speed internet access. What happened to the promise of high-speed internet provided by Clackamas Broadband Express, and why do we still not have high-speed internet access like we were promised? So I don't think anyone promised high-speed internet to every household. Yeah. We grant $9 million allowed us to build dark put dark fiber ring around the county and after that it's a matter of uh, creating ISPs uh, and, uh, and getting further grant money you know the reason the commercial people don't build out to there is because it's not profitable and we uh, are trying to build the highway to get the, uh, the high-speed internet cable out to you with the goal of them connecting you to the houses. But that has not occurred. And so that's why we're applying for this additional grant, like you just heard. Uh, the, uh, a city did it, cost 10 million. A county doing it, in this county, it's probably more like 40 million. If you were to light the whole county, uh, 
so we are working at that, but we never promise high speed internet all around the county. Um, but that is something I would love to do. And I'll tell you, call the other commissioners. Ken and I are 100% in support, but reach out to Martha Schrader, Paul Savas, Sonia Fisher, and ask them to get on board and light the county up. Very good. Okay, thank you, Chair Bernard. I'm also gonna share my screen at this point because we keep on also referencing the Clackamas Broadband Exchange, um, our, our dark fiber. And so if anybody wants to find out more about that, you can go to um, clackamas.us uh, slash CBX and it has more information here um, about what that uh, program specifically is. I guess I should just also add to that is that we're trying to do this without any debt. Uh, I think that's very important. We do not want any debt. If we get that grant, we can expand. And while we're applying for that grant, we're gonna be doing a business plan uh, to uh, at least expand our service where possible. Thanks for the question. Great, thank you. Okay, um, back to uh, one of the, an email that we got from a different, uh, a different Charles. Um, it's great, I think this is reference to uh, Commissioner Humberson. It's great you have kept your campaign uh, promise. What do you see as the economic opportunities with the county's dark fiber? So just the economic opportunities, I think for Clackamas Broadband, Broadband Exchange in general, or Express, sorry. <clears throat> Okay, you want me to take that, Jim? Sure. Shall I yeah. go ahead? Okay. Um, just to give you a little bit of an example of, of where we are currently, uh, the CBX does provide uh, internet access to 270 government agencies and buildings, and we are saving the taxpayers well over a million and a half dollars a year just with the services that we're currently providing. What I see going forward if we could get high speed internet to every home and business in Clackamas County is the opportunity to, for people to start their own businesses, um, operating their businesses from home, uh, not necessarily having to drive someplace, which extends, of course, the lifespan of our roads. Um, it allows for telemedicine in our rural areas that right now is extremely difficult to do because it requires a great deal of bandwidth and speed to do it. Um, it certainly allows more opportunity for people in rural areas to be connected to their local government. Uh, instead of sending me an email, um, more of you would be able to participate in, in uh, Zoom meetings like this, which I think is something at least part of the time that the commission is going to continue doing going forward, because uh, we're seeing more people actually uh, tuning in, if you will. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunity uh, it's also beneficial to those that are um, uh, less economically well off, especially their children, having an opportunity to have high speed internet where they can really get into learning at home and be able to do the assignments and work that they can't do um, because they don't have a computer that has the speeds uh, is also beneficial. So it's it, it just a plethora of opportunities going forward. And uh, my only disappointment is that it wasn't started in 2010. We should have started then, in my opinion, but we're not going to give up on it. Okay, very good. Thanks for that. Um, I'd like to remind the attendees that if you want to pose a question um, and you haven't asked one before, uh, you can do so or provide a comment, excuse me, by using the raise hand feature on Zoom. That's on your Zoom bar. If you are on the phone, you can hit star nine. I don't see any more um, questions from our attendees. So if you do want to ask one, please go ahead and raise your hand soon. Otherwise, we might go ahead and dip out early, but I do have one more um, question that we got from Kathy in Milwaukee. Again, very similar themes with a lot of these questions, uh, commissioners. Um, I have X Xfinity as my ISP in Milwaukee. My bill is over $80 a month. This is one of my most expensive bills, but a necessity since I am working from home and my daughter is as well what can be done to make internet access affordable for everyone. And we've received several similar sort of, you know, comments on 
internet access affordability. Ken, you want? Well, um, the model that I have is, is what they're doing in Sandy, which I think is absolutely outstanding. They provide one gig of service at $60 a month and three megs of service at $40 a month, which I think um, is, is uh, very reasonable. Um, I, my goal has always been to keep it under $100 a month. Uh, beyond that, it's hard to say exactly what it will be until we're able to actually launch something and get it off the ground. Um, but obviously, it needs to break even and then make a little extra so that you have money to maintain your systems and money to invest in expanding your systems. Um, that's why we will do a business plan uh, as part of this to make sure that it is there's a good return on a, a reasonable return on investment. But the good thing about government being able to do this is that we do not have to make a profit because we do not have stockholders that we have to give dividends to or expensive uh, um, uh, executives that we have to give bonuses to. So I, I believe we can do it reasonably and Sandy is a perfect example of a community that did precisely that. I, I'd just like to add that I agree it would have been nice had we done it back then. I was in support of that. Uh, we do have to match those dollars. So uh, back then, uh, it was challenging to do that during the uh, economic downturn. And, and you think that was bad? Uh, I think our current situation's worse. But uh, it's also, if we can save you money, uh, we certainly are interested in doing that. And we can do this at no cost to the county, no debt to the county then we're 100% behind it. So again, call your commissioners and, and say, uh, uh, please move forward on this investment. Okay, thank you both for that. We've had a couple more hands uh, go up. So I'm gonna bring in Marla, Marla Douglas. Um, if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself and then you can um, go ahead and provide your comment, but I don't see you as unmuted yet. Uh, Marla, there you go, if you are there. Hi, Marla. She might be frozen. Yeah, Marla, we cannot hear you if you are there. Oh, we'll try you again in a bit then. Um, okay, uh, we've had one more, another, another, uh, another hand go up, so I'm gonna bring over Trisha George. Trisha, you are on if you can um, uh, unmute yourself and then go ahead, you are on with um, the commissioners. Thank you. Um, I'm Trisha George. I'm the Executive Director of Technology for the North Clackamas School District. And I want to echo um, Stuart's thoughts um, uh, about a collective for broadband for our county. Um, just to give you an, an example, and really my question is, what can we do to help? How can school districts come together, ESDs come together to, um, to help facilitate this? Um, we right now, so far, have spent $168,000 on hotspots for 700 families in our school district. That's uh, for a one-year contract. So, I mean, clearly this isn't sustainable. And we really are looking for a, a solution come this fall. You know, the sooner the better, obviously. My real question to you is what, in your opinion, and how can we move forward as districts and ESDs to collectively um, move, this, move this along? I think supporting our grant application would be key. Um, and then I, who's providing your hotspots? Uh, it seems like the county could have done that. These are yeah. hot spots that are in the in the households of our families. Oh. Okay, okay, Ken. Well, I would say uh, again, contact Dave Cummings. Uh, Dylan can get your contact information and get you the information to contact him. And you start there with our technical services people and see if there is something that we can do in some sort of a partnership. Um, Policy-wise, I think it's a great idea if we can, if we can partner with the school districts. Uh, technically speaking, 
it's out of my wheelhouse, so I'll, I'll respect the uh, judgment of professionals in the field. Um, but I'd love to see us partner with you if, if we can do it. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, Tricia. And I think I do have your email, so I will get back to you with that contact information. Uh, let me see. Next, we have another hand. It's, um, I'm not trying to say the last name, so I'm sorry. Jeremy Peitzold. We'll go with Jeremy Peitzold. I apologize again if I'm mispronouncing it. But go ahead, you are on. That's okay. It's Jeremy Peitzold. And uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you for all the references to Sandy. Um, it's been quite the journey. And it just didn't start yesterday. Um, as you well know, it, it started almost 20 years ago. And uh, we've had a great partnership um, and Sandy, no, Sandy Net. Um, and uh, some of the things that we did do, I know you guys have a lot of history with us um, as I've come to a lot of your meetings and talked to you about Sandy Net. But um, is some of the um, development code that changed in Sandy and some of the positionings we had there. Um, and what kind of things are you looking at in changing of some of your development code in the county? I know you have some of your own sewer treatment plants and sewer areas. Um, you have right away um, and some of these things and being able to open some of those things up uh, for either your own fiber or other people's fiber to get to some of those locations there. Um, but um, appreciate all the comments again back to Sandy Net. It's, uh, um, it's a model that's been used all over the country and uh, in connection with CBX um, as part of the ones that helped uh, with writing of that grant um, 10 years ago. Um, and also, can you reference what grant you're talking about in far, as far as applying for currently? Because I am unaware of that particular grant funding that you're looking at. Well, we don't know if we want to tell you. Maybe you'll compete with us. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, one of the problems, and this, this is true, something that we ought to uh, talk about, and that is there are cities that are actually charging us to run cable, to run sewer pipes, uh, even though they're to their people. Uh, the county doesn't have the ability to say, no, you're not gonna do that. Uh, so that's one thing we could, as a community, uh, as a county, uh, say uh, governments don't charge government fees. So uh, that would help uh, reduce the cost and probably speed it up, frankly. And so back to Ken, he has some other comments. Uh, well, we are partnering with SandyNet right now for the Kiwanis project. And thank you very much, SandyNet, for that. Um, I agree with Commissioner Bernard on the government's charging governments issue. Oftentimes, all that is is a way for uh, a local government to raise revenue without having to actually go to their taxpayers and explain why they need more revenue um, and passing the buck up to a different uh, level of government. Um, I agree. I obviously agree that if, if uh, the county were to put um, infrastructure on the city streets of Sandy, the county should repair those streets back to the, to the appropriate level. Don't have a problem with that part of it at all, but then charging afterwards, for, for the so-called access, um, yeah, I have a problem with that, quite frankly. Um, but again, in spite of all of that, wherever we can partner together and benefit the community uh, and get this service going and expanding it, I'm all for it. So Jeremy, you helped us with the last grant application. So I would suggest that you call our CBX guys uh, Dave Cummings and those guys and find out what that grant is. Yeah, I'll give them a call. I appreciate it. Um, and I think there's some policies you can do in the county on um, just county roads outside of the cities um, in your development code that could um, help future build outs uh, going forward. Okay. Let's talk. Thank you, Jeremy. Great. Thank you very much for the call, Jeremy. Uh, okay, and let's see, we still have, I'm going to try um, Marla uh, one last time uh, to see if she can uh, come in. Uh, Marla, if you are there and you can unmute yourself, then we will try to, um, to get your comment in here. Why don't you try now? Oh, shoot. 
Yeah, we sort of see a frozen picture. Yeah, yeah, but I wasn't sure if that was just um, her, you know, snapshot or something like that. Yeah. Okay, Marla, so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Marla, so sorry. We're not able to to hear you. Um, all right. And uh, unless anyone else has a comment, that might have been our last one. Whoa. Unless anyone else has a comment, that might have been our last one. Um, if anybody else with the attendees has one, please hit the raise hand button uh, right now. I do not see anything else that has come in over email. Yes, Chair. Could she tech, uh, you know, because we have a chat section, could she chat with us? Um, they would. I think she's been emailing me before, but I wouldn't want to okay. try to state, you know, her comment, but I can, um, Marla, if you're still there, I can certainly pass on the comment that you want to the commissioners after the fact, and maybe that's the best way to go. Um, yeah, I would, but it looks like, yeah. I, I would say that her situation right now is the perfect example of why we need high-speed internet for every home and business in Clackamas County. This yeah, demonstrates have. it perfectly. Yep. Here's a citizen that would like to communicate with us uh, and, and can't do so because we don't have that service yet. Yes, very good. Uh, well, I guess we are now out of comments. So commissioners, if you would like to give any closing comments, um, I think now would be the time. I'd just like to say thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for the questions. And I can assure you that Ken and I have always been behind expanding CBX high-speed internet and creating our own ISP in Clackamas County for some time now. Uh, so I'd say at least four years, uh, nearly four years ago, we uh, really brought this subject forward and have uh, been challenged in many ways by um, a business plan uh, and you know a way to fund this uh, without creating debt. But uh, I feel fairly confident that uh, in the next, uh, even next few weeks, we may hear something different because we have a proposal to uh, apply for the grant while we're doing the business plan. If we don't get the grant, then we don't move forward. But if we get the grant, then we will move forward. And uh, by then we'll have a good business plan, uh, which we need to hire out for because uh, uh, the last attempt was not successful. So um, again, call your commissioners and ask them to support moving forward on lighting at the county and uh, we'll make that happen but there's five of us we need one more vote at least <laughs> ken i just want to say thank you for everybody for tuning in and uh, frankly um many of the people that tuned in made it perfectly clear how much the need is there and hopefully um with your support we will get this off the ground and start moving forward. I finally will reiterate my commitment to the business community, uh, particularly the business community that provides ISP services. I invite you to the table to partner with us so that we can expand your service and your opportunities to our citizens and have everybody have access to high-speed internet and all the productivity and opportunity that it will provide. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. No. All right. Thank you, Chair Bernard, and thank you, Commissioner Hummerson, for joining us today. And thanks to all the attendees for joining us as well. This is the latest in a series of listening sessions that the Board of County Commissioners has put on and produced. And we will go ahead and have another one next week, next Thursday, topic to be determined. And I'll also plug for everyone who's, uh, who's on with us now. The budget hearings are coming up soon at the end of this month. They start May 26th and all of the budget hearings, every service district budget hearing, every regular county budget hearing, those hearings that will go on that week after Memorial Day are open to the public and you can give comments at uh, the proper time for all of those. So please do check that out. So for all of us here at Clackamas County, thank you very much for joining us. <laughs>